Ida B. Wells was a pioneering journalist and activist who was extremely controversial during her lifetime. She refused to be sidelined by the white leaders in the movement for women's voting rights or by the male leaders in the black civil rights movement. In the late 1800s, just a few decades after the Civil War, she even bit a train conductor who tried to forcibly move her to the inferior train car reserved for black passengers. She successfully sued the train company for discrimination, though the case was overturned on appeal. As one of her grandsons said of her, she didn't suffer fools, and she saw fools everywhere. Ida was born into slavery in 1862 in Mississippi and grew up during Reconstruction, the period following the Civil War when black people in the South had vastly increased economic and political power. Sadly, she was orphaned as a teenager when she lost her parents and brother to a yellow fever epidemic. In order to support herself and her living siblings, Ida became an elementary school teacher at the age of 16. In the decades following the Civil War, Jim Crow laws were passed in the South to enforce segregation and restrict black people's civil rights. Ida had grown up in a political family during a period of expanding power for black people, so she was very aware of these restrictions. She began working as a journalist while she was still teaching elementary school, and her reporting often focused on the impact of Jim Crow. In 1891, she was fired from her job as a teacher in Memphis, Tennessee because of her political writings, and she began focusing all of her attention on journalism. Lynching, or mob murder, of African Americans was widespread throughout the South after the Civil War, and often occurred when mobs of white people accused black men of sexually assaulting white women. After one of her friends and two other black men were lynched in Memphis, Wells spent years traveling throughout the South, conducting interviews, and researching the supposed crimes committed by lynch victims. She not only exposed that most of the accusations were entirely made up, she also created new journalism techniques that are still used today. Ida published some of her reporting on lynching in the Memphis newspaper where she worked. She was run out of town after a riot broke out and her office was destroyed. She moved to Chicago, where she continued working as a journalist and activist. Ida was also committed to securing women's suffrage, or right to vote. The day before a huge pro-suffrage march in Washington, D.C. in 1913 that Ida helped to plan, some white organizers told black women they had to march at the end of the group. Ida refused to participate under those conditions. Instead, she waited in the crowd until the Illinois delegation passed by when she calmly took her place at the front of the group. Ida remained a political force throughout her life. She was a founding member of the NAACP and later became the first black woman to run for a state senate seat in Illinois, though she lost the election. Ida was a vocal critic of some leading activists who she saw as too conservative, alienating some powerful leaders in the causes for which she fought. She believed deeply that, as she once wrote, the way to right wrongs is to turn the light of truth upon them. She worked to expose that truth until her death in 1931 at the age of 68.